Big Dappuccino here. I'm reloaded. Uh, I'm not going to try to procrastinate too much. I mean, procrastinate. I think I said that word. Um, my last video. I did it so early. I was, well, I did it after work. I shouldn't say early. But, you know. What I call myself? Captain Bonehead struck again. After work, man, I forgot some things. I didn't pronounce some things right because I was a little tired. Um, kind of rushed through it. But we got a little bit to do. I know some people, like, uh, they don't really care about the Fast and the Furious. I'm a fan. I'm not going to lie. And as you can see on the turntable, we have the original version, I think, of... The 70 Dodge Charger that was featured in the first movie, The Fast and the Furious re replica of it. This is the main line version, I think, that came through. If it wasn't replica entertainment at the time, it's called Screen Time Now. And I don't know, because this has, I have never seen him use these wheels before on anything else. So, I don't know if it was conjunction with the movie or what. And it's bigger than the the newer charges. We're going to get and compare that later. But, just getting that out the way. <coughs> this is Oz and Ann's. Number 49, we're going to take a closer look at the cars that were featured, well, some of them, and show and tell number 127. I have a Nissan Patrol that I'm not going to, that I'm giving away to my subscriber. So, I don't know if I should show this or not. It is going to him. You'll be seeing probably tired of hearing that name rudy moons got another video i already posted one so this is going to him this was in show and tell number 127 this nissan patrol I already had one so i'm giving this one to him i think mine was plain jane like mine was blue i have some more i want to give him too I'm still looking for stuff to add to his box. But anyway, let's get into it. Let's get into it with these matchbox mainline cars that were featured in show and tell number 127. First, we're going to go with the uh, Mercedes Benz. This is called CL 2020. Mercedes Benz CLA shooting brake, which they used to do that a long time ago. I don't know what shooting brake means. It's a CLA, which is a C class. It's a wagon. I don't think that's a crossover. Executed well. Extended sunroof, I don't think that's panoramic. But everybody, it seemed like they are trying to get that panoramic effect. Panoramic roof effect. With the extended sunroof. The wheels look good too. They just knocked that out the box. And this is from the Mercedes Benz series matchbox. All these cars I'm put in. And we're going to skip that one. And we're going to go with this one, which is the Mercedes. Not Mercedes. I got Mercedes in my mind. It starts with an M, though. Mc, McLaren 720S Spider. I think Hot Wheels does something similar. But I don't think you do the spider. Let's just see. Do I have a McLaren here? 
I know I have them, but I don't know if I have one right here. So we'll just look at the detail. Headlights, tail lights, wheels look good. It's executed well. It's a good addition to the collection. Next, we got the uh, car that everybody's doing right now. Everybody's going crazy over it. I guess for the past year, ever since it's been released. I kind of have kind of love and hate relationship with it. I don't like the way the angle, the way it looks in real life. I don't even like that it's mid-engine. Because pretty soon it's going to be all-wheel drive, too, I think. It seems like it's going the route of trying to be so much like a European car. Well, that's basically what the Corvette was supposed to be designed to rival anyway, but it always kind of had more of a muscle feel to it. And the black one on... The other side is the Mini GT. Unfortunately, I lost the mirror off it. I don't know where the mirror is. But you got to be careful with these cars. I'm supposed to get the green light version. I haven't seen it in the stores yet. And ordering it, they want too much. So just by dimensions, it looked like for a main line, they did a great job. Excellent job, to be honest. But there's no way they're going to get close, as detailed as the premium is as the Mini GT. Right now, Mini GT is probably, between them and Auto World, they're probably running things on the domestic side. And this one has ghost rally stripes on it. Gotta be careful. Put that back. So, it's well detailed. Can't, you can't beat that for a main line. Okay, next we're gonna do these Hot Wheels. And the first one we're going to do is this Hot Wheels Premium Series, of course, set, I should say. As you can see, it came with the 70 Dodge Charger RT, the Toyota Supra, and Volkswagen Jetta. And let's get the carry-on out the way because we've seen that before. I have several of these. It's no different. This one just has a racist edge up there. Which I wish I had that uh, F-150 Lightning truck that had the de detail up there, but oh well. They had a different set that had the, uh, I think the Mitsubishi Eclipse in it. I wanted that one. But I'm happy to have what I have. Next, we got the Toyota Supra, which I think this one was an early one. I wanted this car for a long time. Happy to get it. Even though I know there are some things missing on this thing. Like, actually, this is supposed to be, the rear wing is supposed to be silver. It's not supposed to be the same color as the body. That's one thing I know. And the wheels, I think they were six spoke. So it's kind of 
close to what it was. And just to compare, we got a mini GT uh, Toyota Supra, which is premium, but just wanted to show how close they got. Of course, the Mini GT, you can see, has the lens headlights detail. It's stock version. It has a stock wing. You can see the lights. You can also see the, uh, the foster details. They did a good job though. Excellent job. I'm glad to have that in the collection. Next, we're gonna go with the uh, Volkswagen Jetta Mark V, another car I've been looking for for a while. They were charging, just like with the Super Individual, it came out, I think, before, but they were charging an arm and a leg on aftermarket, so I, I left it alone. I'm not paying $30 for a car that only was $5.49 in store, six. So, finally patience was rewarded and I had this car to my collection. I think the one I want need now, you know, I want the Big Bird Civic, which, I mean, not the Civic, but the Big Bird uh skyline which is the yellow skyline from the original fast but i need the green the lime green mitsubishi eclipse the brown connor had in the first movie and i said i want to compare it with a previous model which is the red jetta i forgot what set this was i think it came out last year early last year I don't think it was a boulevard set I forgot what set it is was it like Euro Speed or something like that a barn storms or something like that it's mainly European uh, sports sedans And graphics on this one. Some changes, some some little changes. Next, we have the uh, the charger, which I thought it was the same. I don't know which movie this is from. I have a feeling it's from the Fast and the Furious, the fourth movie, because I had this one, which I got through the premium set. And I have a feeling this is from, I don't think it's from Fast Five, but it's totally different. This one is matte. This one is glossy. And it has a black piece up there. So I don't know, it might be. I could swear in Fast Five, his cup, the charger did not have the um the blower sticking out of it. But it's cool to have these different examples of the charger since I'm a fan of the movie. And 
I think they got rid of it. He doesn't. He doesn't even use the charger in the movies anymore. Well, it makes sense because they really got away from the original. I mean, had to evolve, I guess. But um, anyway, last but not least, we got the N2, which is this um, Dodge Charger, 71 Dodge Super Charger Super B. Which has only features and two details with the box. One of uh, this is 7,656 pieces. Um, it's pretty cool. Only problem with this is for some reason the hood. When I opened it, it was closed, hard to open. Once I did that, it was like, it's hard to get it back down. Well, it's doing better now, it's still now all the way. So I'll display it like this. It's not the first quality control issue I had with N2, so. This is a green light version that this is a green light uh, 71 charger that I've had for a while in that orange, the STP graphics. So. And it's it just so happens to be a Hemi charger too. So. But this one don't have no issues with the opening hood. It's pretty sweet too. I think did I get this one offline? I think so. I don't think I bought this one. The Hobby Lobby. I think I got it offline from Amazon. So that's basically it, man. That's awesome. And it's number 49. Like I always say, not the best diecast channel. Not the worst either. Model show a little love for the diecast. I want to thank the subscribers for your support. As I always say to the random viewers, uh, this is not the best diecast channel. It's not the worst hit either. The model is to show a little love for the diecast. I encourage you to subscribe, hit the notification button so you have access to all the content. I do different kinds of content. Like this odds and ends when I take stuff out the packaging. Uh, the videos that I do that are companion to this, show and tell. That's when I get them in, when I have them in the package and I'll show you what I got from my hauls from the week. Um... Then I do showcase videos where I take stuff from my collection, do a theme with it. I do challenge videos, usually from other people's channels, put my spin on it. Do hobby, well, well, I should say, um, log, well, peg hunting videos where um, I actually you take video of the store, you know, upload it. Those are real popular. I haven't done those in a while. So that's basically it. Peace and blessings. This has been Oz and Ends, number 49.